On curvaceous women, you can knit a sweater that fits based on bust measurement, bust circumference. However, it will tend to do this, hike up in front. Of course, it would look much better if it did not do that. And to avoid it, we can knit darts right in. The illustration with the yellow sweater is from my Answer Ladies Machine Knitting Notebook on page 34. And you can see the dramatic difference. This is a little half size model. She's proportioned exactly the same as a young woman with a 36 inch bust, but she's half of every dimension. She's perfect, so things look good on her even so, but she's fairly buxom and they do ride up in front. This halter top does. It is from my book, uh, Ravishing Raglans, which will be out in 2021. So I thought we'd do a sample on the mid-gauge machine that doesn't ride up in front, that has an even across hem by adding in darts, and that will help you learn how to work the darting process. This is the same basic design, but it's for a single bed machine. So we've got a hung hem and a hung hem for the casing for the neck band so that it's simple to knit on a single bed machine. And this is a mid-gauge sample. The other one that you saw was a standard gauge sample. But the shaping of the garment is the same. After completing the hung hem, as I have here, we knit straight up to a little bit below the underarm. For a real human being, it varies between one and two inches below the underarm, depending on a couple of things, the wearer's shape and preference, and also how high the underarm is cut to be. At that point, we will begin short rowing because the goal is to make the side seams the same length as the plain pattern is, so they match up with the back, but put extra length down the front where the curve of the bust is causing that business of riding up. I'm about to start knitting the darts. I'm going to continue talking about something else for a minute, and I will show you the same footage repeatedly while I say different things so it sinks in, so don't get worried that you're going to get lost. You're not. You can figure out the exact details of dart placement, dart length in terms of number of stitches involved in the dart, and dart depth in terms of number of rows involved in the dart mathematically from scratch and do it for any pattern. Or you can use a pattern that has darts. In the um, Answer Ladies Machine Knitting Notebook, I have it figured out for you for all kinds of shapes. The book involves the basic pattern and many ways to vary it to make a long sleeve pattern, make the sleeve set in rather than dropped and on and on. And there's an entire chapter called Dare to Dart where we discuss adding darts and figuring darts. To figure the darts from scratch, you need to know how much is the garment riding up in front. Don't bother with cup size, just go with that. I decided one inch, so that's the extra length I want in the front. It also has to do with the distance from the side seam to the bust point, but we're not going to short row right out to the bust point. That creates a very odd, unnatural, icky looking silhouette. We want to create the extra length but the last of the short rowing needs to end a little bit back from the bust. So for this half size model, I'm knitting a dart that will add one inch of length and it's going to take up two inches of width from each side seam into the fabric. These darts are now complete and I'm ready to knit up to the underarm and shape it normally. We are going to need to use hold position to knit the darts. So do a quick review if you've forgotten how to do that on your machine. It must be set to hold on both sides so that when we pull needles all the way forward, they stop knitting and we can knit rows on the needles that remain. That's where the extra length comes from. So I'm putting my machine so that both sides will hold. You do the same. Now I'm going to show you the dark footage again and we'll talk about something a little bit different. I'm going to use the automatic wrap. That means although every time I pass with the carriage for the dart rows, I'll be adding or subtracting five stitches from work, 
I'm going to actually put the first four in hold, then knit across, and then put the fifth in hold. The point of this action and the same point of the other action you will see me do while short rowing back in is to prevent any holes where the long rows meet the short rows, which will occur if we don't do some kind of wrap. My preference is to use the automatic wrap for the first half of a dart because I believe it makes a slightly flatter, smoother, harder to spot join. But it is not cast in stone. You can do a regular wrap if you want to. So four needles opposite in the carriage into hold. Knit across. Put the fifth needle right next to those already held into hold. On the other side of the work, put four into hold, knit across, put a fifth into hold. Repeat those two things another time. We're going to end up with 10 stitches in hold. The rows are getting shorter, so this is called short rowing in. I've already begun short rowing out, whereby the rows get longer. Opposite the carriage, place five stitches back into work or whatever amount is correct for what you're actually knitting. Knit across. Now I'm going to use the traditional wrap. It is actually your choice whether to wrap on the short rowing out pass or not. I prefer to do so. I like to leave no chance of anything that would resemble a hole shining the undies through. But while short rowing out, I do prefer the traditional wrap. So all five needles knit. I wrap the held needle next to those that just knitted. Place five on the opposite side of the bed back into work. Knit, wrap, five on the opposite side into work. Knit, no need to wrap now, there's nothing else. And finally, return the last five needles to work. Now the dart is complete. You can see a little bit of extra length down the center. Let's look at this one more time in real time. Carriage set to hold. Four needles on the side away from the carriage into hold position. Knit across. Fifth into hold. Four on the opposite side. Again, away from the carriage into hold. Knit across. Fifth into hold. By the way, short rows when making a sharp angle, such as a sock heel, require weights. I don't usually find that darts do, but if you have trouble with stitches hopping off, use some claw weights. Repeat those first two steps, short rowing left, short rowing right, and now it's time to short row out rather than in. Five needles back to work, knit across, wrap. Five back to work, knit across, wrap. Five back to work, knit across, nothing to wrap. Five back to work, knit across. If you added the dart of your own volition to an existing pattern, turn the row counter back to the row at which you began to dart. Otherwise, you will not be able to follow the remainder of the pattern because your row counts will be off. Here I've done that. Now I'm knitting the last few rows up to the underarm and beginning the underarm shaping. Here I've got the front finished and the back finished. The front that you just did with me is pinned on top of the back with the side seams aligned and you can see the extra length that we've created room for the bosom. 